Hello and welcome to the 5 Minute Film Club. This week I'm looking at the 1950 crime drama The Asphalt Jungle. It stars Sterling Hayden, James Whitmore and a very young Marilyn Monroe. The story concerns itself with a collection of criminals who attempt to pull off a jewel robbery. This is a heist film just like Rafifi a film that I reviewed last month, and uh, if you want to, you can watch that review here. And although this film predates Rafifi by five years, this is very much a pioneer of that genre, although it doesn't actually concern itself quite so much with the details of the actual heist, unlike Rafifi. In fact, having seen Rafifi and then watching The Asphalt Jungle, the heist sequence itself takes five minutes and is full of loud crashes and bangs and very, very different from uh, Jules Dassin's Rafifi. The Asphalt Jungle itself is actually more concerned with its collection of characters and also the depressing and claustrophobic atmosphere of the city it's set. I think this film is a great example of a film noir from a director that was a true maverick. John Huston made his name with Humphrey Bogart directing films like The Maltese Falcon. He was described by the film writer Ian Freer as the Ernest Hemingway of Hollywood. He was also given a lot of free reign by the studios. He could actually go and film on location. The studios also let him make films that dealt with subjects that perhaps would run up against the morality code that was in place. And The Asphalt Jungle is a prime example of that. For one of the first times on screen, we have criminals that are sympathetic characters, that are really characterised as real people. It also shows people treating crime like a business, the same as opening up like a greengrocer's or a shoe shop. And also, the film has a moment where one of the criminals, a high up member of society, decides to take their own life rather than actually face justice. This is not really the message that MGM wanted to give out, and yet this film was released completely intact. They didn't get involved in the final edit, and so John Huston was allowed to put out basically his director's cut of the film. His approach in the asphalt jungle is to have characters that we can feel sympathy for. Everyone in this film is trapped by the circumstances they find themselves in, and crime was just another way out. The New York Times says in a contemporary review of the film that all actors gave an unimpeachable performance but goes on to say that if only it weren't so corrupt. Like the noir tradition, it follows a collection of hopeless situations, and so does their subsequent attempts to escape. But it's the build-up and development of the characters that really had me hooked. And even though the trappings of the genre and the time had me expecting that everybody on the screen was going to end up in jail or dead, I still really hoped that somebody would get out. My heart especially went out for Sterling Hayden's Dix, a slightly simple country farmer who we imagine the depression robbed him of his family farm. He has a great scene early on with the very appealing Gene Hagen as Doll, where he describes his dream about when he was a boy on the farm, breaking in a horse. However, when he is asked by Doll, did that actually happen? He replies, no. The reality is he failed to stay on that horse. This exchange between the two characters is just another sign to the audience that we are dealing with real people. And in fact, this film is not about escapism. To further add to the reality and documentary-esque style of the asphalt jungle, the script is peppered with vernacular phrases. For example, they call a gun a heater. I read before watching the film that John Huston actually asked advice from another director. The director's name is not mentioned, but their advice to him was to make sure that every single scene played out as if it was the most important in it. And working to that ethic gives this film an incredibly infectious energy. The film today is possibly best known for the fact that it has in a very small but pivotal role, Marilyn Monroe. In fact, in the re-release posters, she is credited above everybody else in the film, but it's really hard to watch Marilyn Monroe and not be sucked into everything that we know about her. She does truly shine on the screen. There is something different about her, something otherworldly. Now, a lot of that is probably down to the fact that we know so much about her and we know of her untimely death. But it's true that she does kind of stick out of the screen. In this film, she is a very worthy addition to the pantheon 
of femme fatales. This film, when it was released, had a big impact and even a few years later produced a television series spin-off. Its lasting legacy perhaps is the strength of its characters and performances and it also displays all the elements of a great noir crime film from a master of the genre. Hello, thank you very much for watching the review. I really did enjoy watching The Asphalt Jungle and will definitely be checking out a lot more John Huston. I'm sure there will be more in the book to come. I have the book and let's choose next week's film. And it is going to be Move Over Darling from 1963. And strangely enough, another Marilyn Monroe reference. Um, see you next week for Move Over Darling. Thank you very much. Goodbye.